Oh, oh my gosh, that's a good one. Oh, golly. Did you see him swim off with it? There he is, baby. There he is. Welcome back to another adventure. Super excited today because uh, I am not in Arkansas. I'm in Tennessee uh, with my good friend Tyler. I'll put his link in the description below. Uh, his name is Southern Flow. And we're after some of those smallmouth he's been catching lately. He's caught like several threes, some giants. So I'm like, eh, I need to give the Arkansas dinks a break for a while and come to Tennessee and get some big ones. So that's what we're after today. Uh, what I'm throwing right now is I got the uh, tube, or some people call it the gets it. I have a uh, Kytec swim bait on. Kytec swim bait, about three inches. And then I have the Chopo on in bone color. So out of those three baits, surely I'll get a bite. And of course I got a bag full of baits and plastics and stuff like that. So hopefully uh, these three baits I got tied on now will catch some big ones. Now, uh, we are actually kayak camping. We are doing a 10-mile uh, float. We're going to cut it up in half, do five miles a day, camp out on a gravel bar, do some swimming, do some cooking, and then uh, finish it out tomorrow morning. So stick with the stay tuned, and I'll meet you downstream. Uh, there's one. There's one. Little guy. Rock, rock bad. First official catch in Tennessee. It's not that Tennessee smallmouth I'm after, but a uh, little rock bass. Start out the trip. Caught on Jade's jig. Just money for all species. Little finesse jig. It's a nice little deep hole right here. We're fishing. Tyler and I, we just dropped our uh, micro power pose down, sitting side by side in the current. Just sitting here and dragging these baits through this big old hole right here. Oh, there he is, there he is. Looks like a 12. First Tennessee Smalley on the Chapo. Tyler just got a nice one on the fluke, kind of like a green pumpkin color. And it's my first uh, topwater bite of the trip. Hopefully many more to come. He came out of that little uh, tree jam, that log jam over there. Beautiful little fish, maybe 11 and a half, getting close to 12. <laughs> I don't care what the size is. Anything on top is great with me. There you go. Big old rock bass. <laughs> or is that, no, that's a small mouth. That dude is. Dark. Chapo got another one. Look how dark this small mouth is. He is darker than the night. Little guy, but he wanted that Chapo. There's one. Little guy. He wants to get me too. There's a fish. Rock bass. Jake's jig. Good one. Got him. Got him. Oh, it's a nice one. Can't drop my anchor. Oh, God. Get oh, crap. Get oh, my God. Just caught a Tennessee stud. 
with a terrible mitt job, like terrible. I should lose some points on that one, but uh, whoa, bam! Uh, he might be 16. He he's a lot smaller than I thought, but put up an awesome fight. I'm thinking he's 16. He wanted the chopo for sure. Yep, he's 16 and a quarter. Not a bad one. My biggest of the day for sure. Nice, good chunk. There we go. There's one. That's a good one. Oh, he's got another one with him. There's three in there, they're all in there. They're on this hole right here. Just got a creek stud. He's definitely probably 17. Beautiful fish. Two pounds for sure. On the spinnerbait, he had two with him just fighting it. They're trying to get it out of his mouth. He is a 17 and a quarter. Beautiful fish. My biggest of the trip. Oh, yeah, I think he's like 15, 14. He smoked it though. He's not huge. It's a good camera blow up. <laughs> this guy wanted the whopper plopper. About a, nah, I'd say 12. It's gotten exciting about the last hour. They're starting to blow up like crazy now. It's been real slow all day, but now they're getting fired up. I like taking my 3.8 spinnerbait along these trees, casting parallel with them, and just letting them uh, kind of work slowly right next to the tree trunk. Oh my gosh, that's a good one. Oh, golly. Did you see him swim off with it? Stay on. Spinnerbait, sexy mouse. Oh gosh. I gotta thumb him a little bit. I think he's another 17. Don't get back in that tree. Come here. Got it. Good. Yeah. Did you see my line, dude? I dragged that spinnerbait over that tree and just went. <laughs> Spinnerbait's all jacked up. I don't know what happened here. Oh, the whole line slid down, got caught. Okay, I might have to retie that thing. Looks bent out my spinnerbait. It's all janky now. Anyways, and uh, I'm using one of my favorite rods. It's actually a favorite rod, the Defender. It's a seven foot medium heavy, but I'm throwing that spinnerbait on 10 pound fluorocarbon and uh, just got me this baby right here he's probably around two maybe maybe two and a quarter he's a long one it's probably another 17 just how long he is but he's not as thick as that last one uh 16 and a half just shy of uh 16 and three quarters another beautiful smallie we'll go ahead and send him There he is. Not a big one. Little chunk. How about a 15, 14? He gonna get me. He gonna get me. 
he smoked the Pac-Man Whopper Plopper. Like I said, probably a 13 and a half. We'll let him go. Oh, oh, oh. that was exciting. We are at the camping spot. Just gotta go around this river bend here, and we're there. But we got a bunch of down trees and buck brush and stuff to get around first. Oh, oh. I think I missed my spot. We got it. We got it. I think, maybe, uh, uh, yes, we got it. The rear camera has died, but we're right here, so I, I didn't take the time to change out the battery or anything. Might make it. What? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Bumper boats. Nailed it. That's why I did kind of a little bumping session there. See that chair back there? Yeah, that's nice. I think I might get it later. Yeah, I think I gotta get out right here. <laughs> okay. Well, we have our home for tonight. Tyler uh, mapped this out on Google Maps and saw this awesome gravel bar. It's probably like a football field length. Uh, plenty of kindling and driftwood to burn tonight. And I got this awesome little sand line I'm going to put my tent at. It's going to be a nice, comfortable padding for my back because I sure need it after that uh, five-hour drive. But uh, anyways, this is going to be our home for tonight. Uh, Tyler is setting up his hammock in the woods a little bit with the bears. I'm going to be out here uh, closer to the water. <laughs> so anyways, uh, so we got our tent to set up. We got the fire to build. We have uh, cooking to do, so we're gonna get busy. All right, first things first, we need to go ahead and get our 55 liter bag. That's got all of our camping gear in it as far as the tent, footprint, sleeping bag, sleeping pad, pillow, and my clothes for tonight. So we're gonna get that off and we're gonna start setting up right around there. All right, we got our footprint. That's the first thing I need out of here. So that's on top. All right, next we have our tent. Now I'm rolling with the Eureka Mindori two-person tent. I love that extra space for all my camera gear to charge overnight and not be too cramped. So this is perfect size for two people. Uh, also, for one, especially if you got a lot of gear. All right, in order, I have inside my dry bag what I need next. So we have first aid kit. I put that on top, that way I can grab it quickly if we need it. Sleeping pad, the funnest part of camping. You gotta blow this up manually. Last night, I slept in my Jeep, my front seat. Tonight, it's gonna be an upgrade for sure. Throw that in there. I got my uh, camp pillow, thermo rest, roll in itself pillow. Unroll it, fluff it, toss it in. Easy as that. Uh, it's going to get down to the 60s tonight. So I brought a 40 degree bag. A, if I get too hot, I can lay on top of it. B, if it does get that slight chill in the morning, I'm covered with a 40 degree bag. Pull that out and it's a mummy bag. Unroll it. And then we have our change of clothes for the morning. Then we have our toiletry bag. 
And that's it. Easy peasy. What's great about these uh, lawn chair type seats, you don't have to pack a lawn chair. You just unlatch it and make sure you take off the carabiner fish pliers. And then that's your chair. So we're gonna set it up over here. And right by the river, we're going to uh, set up our table and start cooking with the jet boil. All right, the beef stew requires one and three-fourths cups. So we're gonna eyeball it roughly two cups, just shy of it. And the jet boil holds 16 ounces. So we're gonna pour almost all of it in here. Really nice. We need that one kicker log, keep that fire going a lot longer. And there she is, but she goes back pretty far. So I'm gonna take this handy little saw here and knock off probably about half of that where I can easily carry it down the bank here and put it on the fire. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put it right here, get it going, see how easy this is gonna be. Oh yeah, look at that. This is Tyler's saw, that thing is cutting like butter. I'm not even putting any pressure on it whatsoever. Got to stay hydrated. A little Gatorade Zero here. I'm gonna dump it right in that creek water. Oh yeah. Give me a little flavor for dinner too. Something.